Well, this is Father Adam, and I wanted to reflect with all of you during this time on the richness of the Word of God, what it tells us about our life. And during this time when, when we hear all these voices on television and voices around us and voices on uh, Facebook feeds and everywhere else that are blaming everyone, blaming everyone and anyone, blaming anything and everything for what's going on. There is a lot of judgmentalism being passed around when people are judging other people. And we have to stop that because the Bible makes it clear. Judge not, Jesus says, lest ye be judged. And I was reflecting on what is the word of God saying about all of this. And right before Jesus in chapter 8 of John's gospel uh, gets angry with the Pharisees, with the religious people of his day for wanting to stone a woman who was caught in adultery. And when Jesus very famously says, let the first one among you cast the first stone. We see Jesus being confronted at the end of chapter 7 of John's Gospel by the Pharisees, who also pass judgment on him. And one of these Pharisees, because see, we when we think of Pharisees, we immediately think of something bad, some rigid people, stiff people. We have a negative connotation in our mind when we hear the word Pharisee. But really, they were strictly observant Jews. And if we were to place Jesus in a category during his day of which sect of Judaism Jesus would fit into, it probably would have been the Pharisaic sect because Jesus did not want to get rid of the rules and regulations. Remember, he says, I have not come to abolish the law, but I have come to fulfill the law. And the Pharisees were strictly observant Jews, so Jesus would have fit in very well into their own particular sect of Judaism. You know, like today in Christianity, we have different uh, denominations. We have Methodists, Lutherans, uh, Presbyterians, Catholics, Orthodox, uh, and then the non-denominational denominations. You know, we have all of that. Well, Jews have the same thing. They had the same thing and they have it to this very day. There is Reformed Jews, there is Orthodox Jews, Hasidic Jews, all sorts of Jews. So Jesus was a strictly observant Jew. And he did not want to get rid of the rules and regulations. He said, I have come to fulfill them. And who is the fulfillment of the law and the rules and the regulations? Jesus. He is the fulfillment. And who is Jesus? Jesus is God. And the Bible tells us in the first letter of John that God is love. So when we live by the rule, by the law of love, we live by the law of of God. We live in God. And so the first and foremost rule is to love people, that people are not below rules and regulations. Rules and regulations are not above people. People come first. And Nicodemus, who also was a Pharisee at the end of chapter 7 of John's Gospel, he and all the other Pharisees are there and they want to pass judgment on Jesus. But the difference is that Nicodemus went to Jesus, we find out in the previous chapters of uh, the Bible, we find out that Nicodemus went to Jesus at night and listened to Jesus. He spent time with Jesus. That is the difference. These Pharisees, these religious people, did not spend any time listening to Jesus. Nicodemus did. And Jesus puts him up as somebody for us to emulate in our life. Now, when we think of Pharisees, we immediately, immediately think of other people. But really, there is Phariseeism in each and every one of us. We judge other people. So don't so much think of Pharisees out there. Think of Pharisee me. 
that I have Phariseeism in me. I too am a Pharisee because I judge. And all of us are guilty of that. That's why we need more and more Jesus in our life. We need more and more prayer in our life. We need more and more Bible in our life. We need more God because God comes to remove all those iniquities in us all those imperfections in us, all those sinful behaviors in us. Now, we are not finished products, of course. You are not a finished product. You are a work in progress, and God is working on you. We are, the Bible says, clay in the hands of a potter, and God continues to mold us into the beautiful vessel that he wants us to be. But, of course, that takes time. That's why we need to be in the school of our master. Jesus is our master. He is our rabbi. And we constantly need to be educated. And the way to be educated is through the word of God, through prayer, through our relationship with, uh, with Jesus. To get rid of all those Pharisaic attitudes in us, to become more and more like Nicodemus, who was a follower of Jesus. We know that from the Bible. He was a secret follower of Jesus. He spent time with him. We need to get rid of this notion within us that we know better, even though we don't. You don't know better. You don't have all of the answers. When we pass judgment on other people, we think we are in the know about their life, about their lifestyle, about why they are divorced or about why they may have fallen into an addiction like drugs, or the casino, or al al alcoholism, or why they behave in this way or in that way. You don't know, and yet you pass a judgment because you think you know better, and you don't know better. Socrates, an early philosopher, a very famous one, whom the, uh, the ancient world said was the the, the most wise men to have ever lived. And Socrates, the wisest of men to have lived, said, all I know is that I know nothing. The minute you begin to think that you know everything, that's the minute when the problem in your life starts. You don't know everything. You don't have all the answers. Yes, you don't have all the answers. And... We have to admit how much we still have to learn. The Pharisees judge Jesus because of some previous notions or things they have heard about him. At the end of this chapter 7 of John's Gospel, they say, Are you from Galilee too? They say to Nicodemus. Search and you will see that no prophet is to rise from Galilee. Why do they say that? Because in stuff that they have read in the Hebrew scriptures, that's the Old Testament, there the Hebrew scriptures said that no prophet could arise from Galilee. And they think that Jesus is from Galilee. But they don't know because they never took the time to spend time and to ask him and to find out his story. They did not learn his story. They didn't know Jesus' story. All they knew is what they heard about him from other people. And it's like that today. You may not be divorced and yet you pass judgment on divorced people. You may not be in prison and yet you pass judgment on people who are in prison. You may not be addicted to drugs and yet you pass judgment on people who are. You may not be an alcoholic and yet you pass judgment on those people. You may not have five children and yet you pass judgment on people who have a hard time dealing with them. You may not be depressed and yet you pass judgment on people who are. You may not be in politics and yet you pass judgment on people who are. Stop it. We have to stop this Pharisaic attitude of judging people and their actions when we are not able to. You don't know. And I know very well, you know, I know what you're saying right now. Well, I'm just judging people's actions. How dare you? 
you're trying to remove a part of a person that is part of that person. Zip it. You know, so often I, I, I often when I'm when I'm listening to somebody when they come for advice or or in confession or wherever, and and I'm I'm just there and I'm listening to them, and all of a sudden they stop and they say, Well, aren't you gonna say something? And I said, Well, what do you want me to say? And and it's often like that in, in confession. You know, people want me to tell them stuff. I'm not listening to you to try to figure out how to answer you, okay? I'm listening to you to hear what you're saying and to process it and to take it in because I'm interested in what you have to say and to learn from you, not to teach you, but to learn from you. Are you like that? Are you trying to learn from the people in your life? Or are you trying to teach them? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've, I have learned so much from my time at Pelican Bay State Prison. I learned from the prisoners there. I've learned so much from my time that I spent in Oaxaca, in the mountains, with the indigenous people. And I had this attitude when I was going there that I was going to teach them. Yeah, you know, because I come from the United States of America, because I have all these college degrees, you know, I'm going to be a priest, I know the Bible, I know theology, you know, I, I know languages, I know all of that. And they, with their simplicity, taught me so very much. I will never forget when I, when I got there and I prepared so well. You know, I went to Walgreens and I bought myself a toothbrush. Uh, I think it was like four bucks at the time, and that was a lot, okay? Bought myself a toothbrush, was all ready, and I went there, and they didn't have a bathroom inside of the house, but the bathroom was outside of the house, and the sink where you brush your teeth was also outside of the house. And so the night before, my first night there, I brushed my teeth and I put my toothbrush there, and I went to bed all happy. Well, I get up in the morning, and I go, and I see that one of the 16 children, because the, the family had 16 kids, two adults, that's 18 people. One of them was using my toothbrush. Now, of course, you know, uh, I felt like, you know, I can share anything, but there's no way that I'm going to be sharing my toothbrush. And he noticed that my expression had changed, that I became visibly angry. He picks up the toothbrush that they had, one toothbrush for all 16 kids and two adults, and he says, you can also use our toothbrush. Don't worry, he says, you can also use our toothbrush. Now, here I was passing judgment right away without taking the time to learn and to listen. Huh? We do that all the time. I learned so much from them because I embedded myself there with them. I've learned so much from the prisoners. I've learned so much from people who lead different lifestyles that I don't understand. How can I pass judgment on somebody and their lifestyle and the way that they're living. If I don't live in their lifestyle, listen to them. Share in their life. We are called to accompany one another on this journey of life as God accompanies us. God came to be with us, to accompany one another, not to pass judgment on one another and one another's actions. You have no right to do that. No right. See, if you spend all your time passing judgment on other people, you will have no time to love them. And I'm called to love other people. I'm called to love people. Not to ju judge them, but to love them. That's what we have to do in our life. Now, the Pharisees judge Jesus because of some previous notion that they have heard that they read in the Bible. 
How many people today pass judgment on other people because of something that they have read in the Bible or some rules of the church? They say, oh, the catechism says this, the Pope said this, and so you are wrong. How dare you? You know, especially uh, people who try to tell, tell me, you know, as a priest, they say, well, the church says this and this and this, and, you know, and they, they, they obviously think they know better. You know, and I, I feel like saying, you know, how many years did you spend in the seminary? You're reading commentaries from people who went to Billy Bob's Bible College, and now you think you have all the answers. Like the people right now who are saying, well, it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible where God says he punishes us for our sins. And they point to the Old Testament. Well, there's a reason why it's called the Old Testament. Because we are in the new. Jesus is the fulfillment. Yeah, there's a lot of stories in the Old Testament. And you have to take them uh, in the context in which they happened and try to understand them. And you have to listen to people who actually know what they're talking about. People who have studied. God does not punish anyone. We punish ourselves. God is our loving Father. That's what Jesus revealed to us. A loving Father. If you believe in a God who would send a pandemic where thousands of people will die, you can have this God. That's not my God. That is not my God. My God is the God of Jesus Christ, who is our loving Father. Now, if God is my loving Father, what loving Father would put somebody through a coronavirus death where you die suffocating. What kind of a God is that? That's an ogre. Is that, I mean, that's not a loving father. And yet we have people who actually believe this. We have Pastor Jeffress in uh, Dallas, a $130 million dollar Mega church pastor who's on TV all the time. He appears on uh, lots of TV networks doing commentaries, and he says that God sent this as a punishment to the United States because of abortion and other sins. I mean, Pat Robertson from the Christian Broadcasting Network, he said when the tsunami and the earthquake happened in Haiti, that it was a punishment on Haiti. What kind of a God are we believing in? If that's the God you believe in, you can have him. I don't want him. My God is my loving Father. And now think of it, those of you who have children, would, would you punish your children with a horrible death where they're suffocating? I mean... Who would believe in a God like that? So people read in the scripture like these Pharisees did all sorts of stuff. And they read that, you know, no prophet could come from Galilee. And they heard that Jesus comes from Galilee. So it's clear to them that Jesus cannot be a prophet since he comes from Galilee, they think. You know, they judge him based on something they've read in Scripture, in the Bible. Even the devil can use the Bible to prove his own point. Just because you can read the Bible and take out passages from the Bible doesn't mean you know what you're talking about. Remember, G Jesus, when he's confronted in the 40 days in the desert, the devil confronts him and tempts him with the Bible. It is written the devil says. And then Jesus confronts the devil and answers the devil with the Bible. With the Bible. 
He confronts the devil with the Bible. So you have to know your Bible because when the devil will come and hit you with tempting thoughts of judging others. So you can answer the devil with the Bible. That's why it's so very important to know our Bible. If only these Pharisees had taken the time like Nicodemus did, they would have found out that Jesus is from Bethlehem and that he's from the line of David. But no, they were not interested in talking to Jesus. They made their mind up about him without conversing with him. And ask yourself this question right now. Do I act in this Pharisee way in my own life? By passing judgment on other people without knowing them? Do I judge things or people's ways of life without listening to them, without getting to know them? Do I judge immigrants? Do I judge my neighbors? Do I judge people of a different skin color without talking to them? People who speak different languages. Where does all this knowledge in you come from? Where you feel like you have the right to judge someone else's heart. You don't know a person's heart. And all of us are guilty of us. We are all Pharisees. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. We all pass judgment. Yeah, I'm a Pharisee too. I've passed judgment. Uh-huh. Absolutely. We've all done that. All of us. How many people have judged you in this life and you said to yourself, this person doesn't know me and they've judged me. They don't know what is in my heart and they talk about me. Well, why do you do the same thing then? The most important question is here, why do I do this to others? And stop justifying the fact that you are passing judgment on others by saying that you are not judging them. Oh, Father, I'm not judging the person. I'm judging the sin. There's only a way for you to cop out of taking responsibility. Zip it. Listen to people. We can talk in general about things and not directly to people because you're hurting them. You don't have to tell people that they're uh, living in adulterous lifestyle or that they're living this type of lifestyle or that they need to do this or that. You know, are they stupid? No. It's like the people who used to tell me when I weighed more than 300 pounds. You know you have to lose weight. What do you think? I'm blind? That I don't have a mirror in my house? You don't think people know? Everybody has a conscience and inside of them they know if they're doing wrong. You have to love the people. Accompany them in your life. Not pass judgment on them. You don't know what is in the person's heart. If you waste your time on passing judgment on people, you won't have time to love them. Look at Nicodemus. He spent half the night. He went to Jesus at night, the Bible says. And Nicodemus defends Jesus because he got to know Jesus. And that's what we have to do. Get to know the people in our life and get to know Jesus from the Word of God. As I bless you today and every day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.